Okay, I don't know why. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, welcome to They Did What Now, where we talk about individuals that are on death row in the United States. We do have our first season out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you like to listen to your podcast. It's pretty much out there now. So just jumping right in, there are 27 states that have the death penalty, as well as the U.S. government and the U.S. military. It was last year that the federal government started to resume executions, but the U.S. military has not executed anyone since about the 1960s or 1970s when the death penalty was reinstated in the United States. And there are currently four individuals on death row in the U.S. military. There are 2,553 inmates on death row as of October 1st, 2020. There are some sources that do say there's 2,557. I do not know why there is a four person difference. It could be the fact that some, in, some individuals that were on death row do get commuted to life in prison, imprisonment, and it's just not completely up to date. Since 1976, there has been 1,534 executions. The last execution came out of Texas on June 30th, 2021. And since 1973, there is 185 exonerations with Florida having the most at 30 exonerations. And it is important to talk about those exonerations because we are talking about a state or the government ending someone's life. And you don't want them to look back at it and be, and say whoopsies. <laughs> you don't want a whoopsies. Okay, but today we're gonna talk about Len Davis who is on federal death row and he's a former New Orleans police officer. And you're gonna find out how this former police officer ended up on federal death row. So we're gonna go back to October 10th, 1994. Len, so Len Davis was a police officer with the New Orleans Police Department, and he would exchange favors with co-defendant Paul Hardy, a New Orleans drug dealer. Damon Cossey, the other co-defendant, was an associate of both Davis and Hardy. On or about October 10th, 1994, Kim Marie Groves witnessed Davis's police partner, Sammy Williams, pistol whip her nephew, Nathan Norwood, who lived in the neighborhood. Kim filed a complaint against Davis with the New Orleans Police Department's Internal Affairs Office, alleging that Davis engaged in police brutality. Davis learned about the complaint on October 12th. The next day, Davis paged Hardy at about 5 p.m. So now it's October 13th. When Hardy called back, he and Davis discussed a plan to kill Kim with Hardy as the shooter and Davis and Williams taking care of evidence at the crime scene after the murder was committed. Davis arranged to meet Hardy and Cossey at the police station to view photos of homicide cases. Davis and Williams then drove to Kim's neighborhood in their New Orleans Police Department patrol car and searched for her. Shortly after 7.30 p.m., Davis and Williams picked up Hardy at his home and drove back to Kim's neighborhood so that Hardy could walk around. After driving Hardy home, Davis and Williams returned to Kim's neighborhood and searched for her again. Davis became agitated as the evening progressed because Kim had not been killed yet. At about 9.45 p.m., Davis called Hardy to complain. Hardy assured him that the murder would get done. At about 10 p.m., Davis and Williams spotted Kim near her home. Davis paged Hardy. When Hardy called back, almost immediately, Davis described Kim's appearance. Hardy replied he was on his way. Williams' shift ended at that point and he left Davis with the patrol car. About 45 minutes later, Davis called Hardy again to complain that Hardy had not killed Kim yet and described Kim's clothing and location in detail. Hardy, along with Cossey and a driver, went to Kim's neighborhood. At about 11 p.m., Hardy shot Kim in the head, killing her. At the time he was planning the murder with Hardy and Cossey, Davis was unaware that he was a target of an FBI undercover investigation into corruption in the New Orleans Police Department. That investigation 
Operation Shattered Shield involved soliciting New Orleans Police Department officers to guard what they thought was a warehouse holding illegal drugs for shipment. In connection with the investigation, the FBI conducted surveillance and recorded cellular telephone conversations of Davis and other New Orleans police officers. Sorry about that. And just a little side note into Operation Shattered Shield and the FBI. This is how Len Davis gets caught with the federal, federally and charged with federal capital murder instead of Louisiana capital murder. And I believe it's FBI Files has an episode about Operation Shattered Shield and goes into some details about Len Davis's case, as well as the fact that during these phone calls, they, they could progressively hear him get more angry as Kim is not killed until later into the night. So go on to his trial. In about April, 1996, Davis, Hardy, and Cossie were tried jointly before a trial. The jury found Davis and Hardy guilty on all three counts they were charged with. While they found Cossie guilty on counts one and two, but could not reach a verdict on count three. After the conviction, Davis refused to return to the courtroom and the case proceeded to the sentencing phase in his absence. The jury selected a death penalty and Davis and Hardy were sentenced to death while Cossie was sentenced to life imprisonment without release. So now they're able to appeal their sentence to, well, okay, so if you get tried in the district court, since this is federal, you get tried in the district court, when you appeal, it's still in the district court, but it's with the appeals, not, and sometimes it is before the same judge who just sentenced you. And then when you appeal again, it's to the next court. So after the district court, it now goes to the court of appeals. And then after the court of appeals, it goes to the Supreme Court. So on appeal, Cossie's conviction and sentence were affirmed. Davis and Hardy's convictions were affirmed on counts one and two, but reversed on count three due to insufficient evidence. Their death sentence were vacated and remanded for resentencing. Davis's resentencing proceedings began on July 25, 2005, before a jury. Davis elected to represent himself with appointed counsel serving as backup. So during the resentencing proceedings, Davis is his own attorney representing himself, but sitting, usually sitting behind him, kind of in the audience, is the backup counsel to when Davis decides to stop representing himself and have someone actually help him, or if he no longer wants to do it, then that backup attorney will represent him and kind of picks up where he left off. And on October 3rd, 2005, the jury returned a verdict rendering Davis eligible for the death penalty. Thereafter, Davis refused to return to the courtroom for the second stage of the resentencing, but permitted his backup counsel to proceed in his absence. So while Davis is no longer in the courtroom because he refuses to go back out, now his backup counsel is representing him. After hearing the government's and defense counsel's evidence, the jury returned a verdict recommending the death penalty. On October, I'm sorry, on August 17, 2005, Davis filed a motion for judgment of acquittal in a new trial. On October 20, 2005, the district court denied the motion. On October 27, 2005, the district court sentenced Davis to death. On June 16, 2010, Davis's convictions and sentences were affirmed by the Court of Appeals. And on March 21, 2011, Davis's petition for writ of certiorari was denied by the Supreme Court of the United States, meaning the Supreme Court did not want to hear his case and what the Court of Appeals said will stand. So since, since the Court of Appeals affirmed his convictions and sentences, they're affirmed. So where is Len Davis today? Well, easy. <laughs> he's on death row. So he's currently on death row at the United States Penitentiary, Terre Haute, in Indiana. The foreign police officer was known as Robocop, and he had been suspended six times and received 20 complaints between 1987 and 1992. In 1993, he received the department's Medal of Merit, and about a year later is when he planned this murder, and this murder happened. 
Hardy, his co his co defendant, was later resentenced to life without parole after being deemed ineligible for execution. So, out of the three co defendants, Len Davis is the only one currently serving a death sentence. The other two are life without parole. And lastly, oopsie. Sorry. Lastly, in 2008, the city of New Orleans settled a lawsuit with Kim's three children in the sum of $1.5 million. So that's the last of anything that happened out of this case. But if you have any questions, you can enter them into the chat and I'll be glad to answer them. Or you can email us at theydidwhatnowpodcast at gmail.com. Was Len the only one caught? No, Len Davis was not the only one caught as there was an entire FBI investigation into the New Orleans Police Department. They ended up, I can't remember how many arrests they ended up with, but their investigation did get cut short to the, to the amount of evidence they wanted because of this homicide. And there is another New Orleans, former New Orleans police officer, Antoinette, who's on Louisiana's death row, who worked with Len Davis. And she, I believe it was triple homicide. And she was also partnered with a drug dealer who ended up kind of, she ended up being in a relationship with. So now Len Davis isn't the only one who got caught. They ended up kind of restructuring the New Orleans Police Department. And so it was within trying to build a relationship with the community that all this was happening, as well as restructuring after, after several police officers ended up serving prison time. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions. All right, with that, you can always email us at, email us at theydidwhatnowpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for tuning in.